No. Nope. Can't do it. Sorry. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. You can't make me do that. I won't do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Why would I do that? I'm not gonna do that. Listen, I'm not gonna do it. You can't make me do that. How many subscribers are we up to? Wait, hang on a second. Let me, let me, let me look at this. Uh, uh, we probably, I think we... Dude, what are you guys doing? Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Welcome to another Ruins Rush Guide. Today, I'm going to rush the ruins as my best friend, Wes. He's the best character in Don't Starve Together. So actually, since Wes got reworked last year, he does have a couple interesting perks that come into play during the Ruins Rush. So maybe this is time well spent. It's going to be mostly pain, but... Hell, I, I said I would do it, let's just friggin' do this. So the first and most obvious early game perk for Wes is gonna be the speedy balloons. He can craft these on day one with this pile of balloons. It only costs like five sanity and Wes immediately gets a 30% speed boost. The balloon doesn't last super long, so if you're relying on these for speed all the time, then yeah, you're gonna be spending a lot of sanity on making them. But the reality of speed boost is like, you don't need speed boost while you're gathering stuff. You just want speed boost while you're, you know, running around and exploring and fighting, so you don't really need speed boost all the time unless you're playing shipwrecked and are addicted to coffee like me. This was actually a really solid map. We found a pigman village right next to the portal, like maybe two or three screens away from the portal. So that's gonna be a really nice source of early game boards, cut stone, tons of carrots, tons of berries. It's just a really nice thing to find early on. And obviously the pig skin that we're gonna need to make football helmets. I was a little late in finding the mosaic. It took me until the top of day two to spot it, but fortunately there's a touchstone right at the entrance. So we're pretty much loaded up on most of what we need to go down to the ruins right away. I do wanna find two mole worms before I go down so that I can make some moggles on the way to the ruins and the first mole worm I spot in the mosaic. At my first science machine, I'm just gonna prototype a backpack, the doodads, and the alchemy engine. That's really all I need to make here. I'm not gonna prototype spears or log suits or anything. I'm just gonna assume that I'm gonna go straight to the tier two fighting gear as soon as I put down an alchemy engine. I hop through a wormhole in the mosaic and immediately find my second mole worm. So that's awesome. We got two mole worms now. All I really need now is to get some large meat and some light bulbs and then we'll be set to go down. So I wait to put down the alchemy engine until I get the light bulbs and then I'm putting it down. I'm prototyping a football helmet and then I'm going to kill six pigs for some raw meat. So now I can craft the ham bat, the lantern, and an opulent pickaxe. So that's it, day three, I'm gonna head downstairs and find the ruins. That's pretty much all I need. I stopped by a bunny village for some extra carrots and maybe some extra meat. And I was trying to figure out why this bunny kept aggroing on me. At first I thought it was like a West thing, but then yeah, apparently I had my backpack still on me. It was just closed so I didn't see it. But there's there's meat inside. The bunnies know that I got meat, even if the backpack is closed. So yeah, if you're gonna take your backpack off for this, just make sure it's actually off. This is so classic, Wes. Let's see, on day four, we walked through the red mush tree forest, we found the muddy biome, and actually the blue mush tree forest was right next to it. So I need to go into the blue mush tree forest anyway to grab some blue caps, but since it connects to the grotto, what I'm gonna do is hang out in the grotto until nighttime, and that'll give me some time to kill some mush gnomes and grab some living logs. So mush gnomes are super annoying to kill and the drop rates for the living logs goes like this if you need three living logs the first mush gnome is going to drop one the second mush gnome is going to drop one and the third mush gnome is going to drop two this is just basic math people one cool thing about the mush gnomes though is that they glow in the dark kind of like slurpers do, so you actually don't need the lantern down while you're fighting them. You could just run up to them and start swinging. And then when night falls, I'm going to harvest some blue caps. I got a lot of people telling me that I should have made a shovel and just dug up the blue caps, but the fact is, I... 
I'm not gonna go through more than like 20 blue caps in the ruins before they go stale. So yeah, in addition to destroying a non-renewable resource, it's just not all that necessary. I needed to spend time around here anyway to get living logs. I might as well wait until nighttime to pick blue caps. Day five, I spotted the lichen biome. It is the nightmare phase, so I can't just run face first in right now. I gotta be really careful of shadow creatures as Wes. Besides, I need the nightmare fuel, so I'm just gonna hang by the perimeter and fight shadow creatures until the nightmare phase ends. Also, I need to go find a depths worm, and as soon as I spot one, I throw down the alchemy engine. We're gonna kill the depths worm, and we're gonna make our moggles. Now, moggles are gonna be really important for Wes. I'm gonna try to be as hands off with this ruins clear as possible. Also, while I'm at the alchemy engine, I'm gonna prototype a chest so that I can throw that down at the pseudoscience station. Day six, we head into the ruins, and the very first thing I see is a developer graveyard in the middle of the ruins. I've actually never seen a developer graveyard in the caves, so this is a lot of firsts for me. This is one hell of a map. In the description, I'm going to post the seeds for both the overworld and the caves. Uh, so that if you have gem core mod installed, you can stick this seed on. I might use this cave system for the next endless server. It's a really good ruin system, you'll see. Now, as I'm clearing, I'm trying really hard to avoid fighting the clockwork knights. And there are a couple reasons for this. First of all, they got tons of HP, so as West, they're going to take forever to kill. They don't drop anything particularly incredible. At least bishops drop purple gems. Plus, the moment I hit a knight, all the nearby clockworks are gonna aggro on me, so I'd prefer as West to just, you know, mine and hammer the stuff around the knights while kiting their attacks. That said, there are some bishops that I will have to kill, and to do that, I'm gonna tank them. Now, as West, the bishops are gonna hit me three times before I kill them, sometimes more if they catch me off guard. And this is honestly fine. I got the pigskin for football helmets. I got the blue caps for healing. I just need to, you know, I can't just run up and tank every single thing I find. I'm picking my battles where I need to fight them. But bishops are definitely worth fighting for the purple gem. So yeah, West has 75 of each stat now. Now, th this means that he's gonna go crazy faster because of his low sanity, but it is also a double-edged sword, because if you are zero sanity, then killing any nightmare creature will get you back above insane right away. If another character gets their sanity down to zero, then they're likely gonna have to kill multiple shadow creatures before they get their sanity back up above being insane, and during that time, they're gonna be losing insanity from the auras of the shadow creatures. So this actually makes Wes really easy to control sanity-wise. And in the ruins, yes, we're gonna have to stop and kill nightmare creatures more often, but it also means it's not gonna slow us down as long each time we have to do that. The deal with Wes and tools is that he gets more uses out of tools, but he loses efficiency. So broken clockworks are gonna take four hits to hammer and statues are going to take 13 swings to pick. Because of the awkward breakpoints, sometimes this works to Wes's favor. For example, Wes can mine a total of 13 and a half statues with a single golden pickaxe, but other survivors will only be able to mine like 13.2. It's a negligible thing, but it's interesting how it works out. There are a couple of weapons that are directly buffed with Wes, and I will show you some of those in a second. I didn't feel like getting into it with the two bishops at the completed station, so I'm going to upgrade another station, and the first thing I'm going to do is make a construction amulet, and then I'll use that amulet to make a star staff, two thulacite crowns, and a thulacite club. The thulacite club is actually really awesome for Wes, because he gets 267 uses from it. The base damage is going to be nerfed because of his damage modifier, but the shadow tentacles that spawn are not going to be. So Wes is going to get a lot more damage out of this weapon than any other survivor with default damage modifiers. Wes found himself in the ruins at a really bad time. There were a ton of nightmare lights nearby, and when the phase started, I was just suddenly surrounded by nightmare creatures. So I'm running away for a second, and what I'm trying to do here is lead the terror beak away so that I can kill him first. So what I'm doing here is once I get a little distance away, I'm dropping the lantern. When the terror beak catches up with me, I'm fighting it a little bit. Then when the crawling horrors get to me, I pick the lantern back up, run away a little bit, rinse and repeat. That way I don't have to deal with crawling horrors and terror beaks all at the same time. I can't really survive a lot of hits with Wes. I had to go get a little bit more thulacite, but now I'm finally able to craft the magiluminescence and I have everything I need to go fight Ancient Guardian. 
no cheese. Check out how far this depths worm followed me into the ruins. It's nuts. I can't tell if this is like the placebo effect or just power of suggestion with Wes. I know that certain mobs will stay aggroed on him for longer, but I didn't realize that this applied to depth worms. Does this apply to other enemies as well? It's super annoying having a mob chase you for screens and screens as Wes. If this is true, then this new aspect of the character is probably my least favorite aspect of the character. Day 11, I finally found the labyrinth. These ruins are absolutely massive. I'm gonna show you this map. It's ridiculous. There's like three separate branches and they're all ginormous. But fortunately, out of the first labyrinth chest I look, we have a bat bat. A bat bat is one of Wes's best healing options. You know why? Because Wes gets a hundred uses out of it, and the life leech value is the same as with any other character. Wait, how much does a bat bat leech? 6.8. That means Wes is going to get... 680 HP from a single bat bat. Yeah, if I mained as Wes, I would totally carry one of these around with me. And in the caves, you're insane anyway, so yeah, this is a great item for Wes. Okay, day 11, I'm starting the fight with Ancient Guardian. Wes is gonna be doing 44 damage with the club. Fortunately, he gets a bunch of extra uses, so we should be able to kill Ancient Guardian with just the club. It's just a bummer that Ancient Guardian doesn't get stunlocked anymore, so he's not gonna get hit by any of the shadow tentacles. He's just gonna charge away before they attack. Fast forward to day 13. Yes, I am still fighting Ancient Guardian. I can only get one or two hits every time he charges, and I'm not doing a lot of damage. The first time I started starving, I picked the Lycan in the arena, but now I'm starving again, which means I need to leave the labyrinth to go eat. If I had carrots or cooked meat, this wouldn't have been an issue because that food can last longer, but lichen just, it just spoils on you so fast. So I eat lichen as needed, it's no big deal. I'll just munch on a little bit at the entrance to the labyrinth and then run back in to finish the job. Finally, we kill Ancient Guardian on day 13. I'm very proud of myself that I didn't cheese him, but... I don't think there were any good places to cheese him anyway. Not that I checked. Anyways, loot from the chest is not bad. We got another Thulocyte Club, which is great, and an Ice Staff. Ice Staves are also really good for Wes because Wes gets an extra, I wanna say seven uses out of it, and the freezing effect is still the same. Back at the station, I'm gonna make another three crowns. I'm going to make a Star Staff. I'm gonna bring what's left of this construction amulet with me, and I'm gonna grab all of the gems. It was a pretty good haul for a rush, but I have not even scratched the surface of these ruins. They are absolutely massive. So, in summary, Wes is not awful for runes rushing. Yeah, he's, a, uh, he's, he's not good for runes rushing, but some of his new kit from the character refresh does give him a slight edge in some situations. That speedy balloon, it's such a nice thing to have in the early game before you get a cane. Now that Wolfgang's speed got nerfed, there are only a few characters left that can access this kind of speed early on. The other nice advantage is default hunger. Because, honestly, in a Ruins Rush, the thing that slows me down a lot is lack of food. So my biggest qualm with Wes in the Ruins was always the increased hunger drain. But now that it's just default, it means you don't have to bring nearly as much food with you to the Ruins. Yes, you have to eat every day now, but it's not much worse from when his max was 113 and he drained 90 hunger a day. The difference now is he doesn't need as much food, and I think that's a great change. The Ancient Guardian fight was pure pain. As Wes, I will cheese this fight until the fight gets reworked. There's gotta be a way to speed up the pace of this fight and keep it engaging. I really hope that this gets addressed soon because this fight shouldn't last as long as a toadstool fight. Anyways, that's it for Wes in the ruins. I hope you enjoyed the video. Big, 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 big shout out and thank you to Mr. Giblet for his incredible generosity on my Twitch streams. Thank you very much, Mr. Giblet. This video is for you. I hope you appreciated all of the pain and suffering. And thank you to everyone for watching. I appreciate the support, and I'll see you on Twitch soon. Take care.